All right, baby, we are live. Beautiful. So, Brady, I really appreciate you, you know, taking some time out of your day. I know you guys are really, really busy on that end. And, um, you know, kind of agenda today is, you know, talk a little bit with each other. Um, I know we both are in the early uh, rollouts of sale ops. We have a ton of really great stuff going on. I know we've personally been able to benefit um, a lot from the curriculum. So I definitely would love to, and for anyone watching this, uh, Brady, I'd love to hear your story, where you come from, kind of, you know, where you're at now and how sale ops has, you know, changed the trajectory of what you're doing. And I'm going to do the same. I'll, you know, fill you guys in on, you know, who I am, where I come from, what I'm used to, and then coming into contact with this information, what it's been able to do for me. So uh, Brady, let me take it away, my brother. Welcome. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Gre really happy to be a part of this. Um, name's Brady Harris. I, um, uh, I actually, I turned 50 years old ne this time next week. I've uh, been in sales for at least 30 of those 50 years. Uh, cut my teeth in sales formally as a home improvement salesman, um, focus in the fenestration industry, mostly windows, doors, skylights. There's a hole in your house that gets filled in with glass. I was the guy you wanted to talk to to buy stuff. Um, my sales training has all been kind of geared around that over the years. Uh, I've been with some of the uh, some very notable uh, sales trainers over the course of, the, of my career who have structured everything from model home pitches to same day discount pitches to uh, all kinds of different uh, different structurally structurally oriented sale uh, um, strategies. Right. Right. Those strategies are great. But what they've never done is give me direct insight into the minds of the people that I am interacting with and create an ability within myself to hack into their level of thinking and really focus on what's most important to them. So that's been a piece of the puzzle in my professional life that's been missing this entire time. I've, I've had great success in sales. Uh, my first official year as a home improvement salesman, um, I was the first person in the company to break a million dollars in cumulative sales for the year. I was the first uh, person to back that up with a repeat year. Um, I was the first person to break a six figure sale. Um, and honestly, if I had these tools back then, <laughs> I probably wouldn't be working right now because I would have been retired already. Um, over the years I've, I've you know, started and, and sold three different businesses, um, a home improvement business, a consulting business and a restaurant and bar. Uh, cause I thought that would be a, a fun thing to do, which, you know, it turned out to be. So ultimately I've been selling myself or something really since I, I put my tools down and, and, and walked out of the field and stopped making money with my back and start making money with my brain. Yeah. Um, so as we've converted that and, um, you know, my family has grown, I got married and I have two adult sons. Um, I'm teaching them what I'm learning in sale ops. So they're ahead of the game considerably uh, when they hit the ground. Um, it's, it's been a, it's really been a life changing ordeal. So, um, a little bit on my personal side, I grew up on the East Coast. We were a military family. We bounced around, but finally settled in Wilmington, Delaware. Um, stayed in Delaware for 40 years. Uh, decided my, my rheumatologist, I have rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, my rheumatologist decided that it was either time for me to get on a very aggressive um, schedule of medicines or right. get someplace more conducive to, to a healthy living. Um, so. Vegas, uh, Las Vegas, Southern Nevada hit the hit the uh, nail on the head for that. So we, my wife and I sold our restaurant, we sold our bar, we sold our house, we both quit our full time gigs, put everything in a in a, in a pod and across the country we shut we come. Um, wow. we, we settled here with really money in the bank and the determination to make our way in life out here. And really the best way I've always found in doing that is, is selling th is selling things sales has been my lifeblood for for decades now um so fast forward we like, get involved with safe life defense um we're working through pre-pandemic during the pandemic uh, this is an exploding company with a great product offering um that really was a a, a natural transformation for me to, to to grab onto the product I'm, I'm familiar with body armor but it never actively sold body armor ever um, right and the company's doing crazy numbers 
month. Oh, insane. Right. Uh, 2019, we did around uh, just north of 9 million. 2020, we did uh, over 50. So we, we, we came in just north of 53 and a half million for 2020. And we're tracking to be in the mid 60s this year. Um, from a personal perspective, if you told me, I, and, and our average cost per vest is between 550 and 606 and a quarter. So it's not a big ticket item by any stretch. Um, and I closed my first year in sales here at 2.4 million uh, in 12 calendar months with Shoot. really not a whole lot to go on. Now we have this sale offs thing moving and I've just posted back to back months in excess of $300,000. Um, so from a goals oriented perspective, I'm looking at what I used to think was going to be a $1 million a year endeavor. I'm doing in a quarter now. Um, the goal is to be 350 to 400 per quarter. And, and inch that up incrementally to where I'm doing a half million dollars a month. And this um, is directly related to what you're learning in sale ops. It absolutely is. Um, it, it's, it's very easy. My, my focus is on the corporate side. So right. corporate sales are not impulse buys. They're not, um, you know, it's, it's not a scenario where you're, you're someone's calling with a credit card and saying, I have the extra money this week. I'll take it. You're typically dealing with grant money, bond money, uh, the, the layers and layers and layers of paperwork. So the, the closing cycle is absurd. There, there yeah. are cycle. There, there are some accounts I can close out same day or within a couple of days. Uh, the one I just closed this morning is a twenty-eight thousand dollar deal, and I've been working on it for nine months. It takes wow. that long in some of these in some of these environments. But what's your what? What I've really picked up from sale ops in the in the, uh, in the hacking perspective is being able to take that elicitation approach, uh, looking to elicit affirmations along the way from everyone from the ground level guy who I give the first quote to, the first proposal to, who's been right. tasked with just get me a bunch of data and get me some numbers to go with it. Then the guy above him and the guy above him and the board that they all presented to and the VP who signs the check. Being able to talk to those people and elicit information from them and steer them in, uh, directionally has been an enormous, enormous help um, and, and really given me the tools to close at a much higher level. Um, we were closing, myself and my colleague closed at a, at a 50 to 60 percent rate over the course of the last year, which right. in any sales environment, you take a 50 to 60 percent close rate all day, every day. Yeah, hell yeah. Um, we're, we're almost at 80 percent. My personal closing percentage is almost at 80 percent right now. Wow. Um, these opportunities don't I'm leave us it. because that... Uh, they don't they don't not buy from us. They either don't get funded or the right. rents get declined. That's it. We see a lot of that on our end, too. It's like, you know, it's not, uh, hey, this doesn't make sense. No, this thing makes sense. Can you make it make sense for yourself? <laughs> right. Can you afford this? You know, right. um, so I love that. What would you say, you know, because you mentioned, you know, being able to put yourself in, you know, that customer's mindset kind of taking a different type of psychological um, approach to these people combined with that elicitation, what's maybe one or two small things that you've been able to tweak within, you know, your sales game that has really dialed you in? That is a great question. And it's a, it's a portion of our business that I'm, uh, is a blessing for me, right? Because of what I sell, it, it, I take it very personally if, if someone isn't in a position to buy from us right away. There is an immediate and inherent danger if I don't, if I don't show you the right value in this product to a point where you purchase it and it's on the way to you, you you're physically in danger. Um, we have paramedics who go out who are exposed to needle and knife threats every day. We have cops who are on the streets who are exposed to guns, needles, and knives every day. So being able to not focus on a fear-based sales tactic, but a reality-based sales tactic. And basically get into these people's heads and say, listen, if you could get out onto the street for less than $1,000 out of your own pocket, I'll even break the payments up for you. If you could do that and protect yourself against hypothermic needles, any edged blade threat, not strike or slash, in a product that has a national certification behind it and will defend you against any handgun, shotgun, tasers, a couple of armor piercing rounds and multiple hits. And it looks professional. You can have your name, your blood type and carry stuff in the pockets. If does that sound like something that you want or need? 
And when you put it in terms of those like that, they can relate it to their day. I'm not saying, dude, if you don't do this, you could get killed. That's a terrible way to sell something. But but finding the driving point by by eliciting responses from those people and then tailoring, uh, it's not even a pitch anymore. It's tailoring a conversation that basically says, hey, listen, here's what you I have what you need. You want what I have. If all we're talking about is a number, get the number out of the way. The number's just a number. Your credit score is not going to go up and down. Your zip code changes. You know, everything in life is numeric. If you let your life be bound by numerics, you're never going to get anywhere. Do you or don't you need the protection? Well, yes, I do. Well, then let's just work through the number and figure it out. And it's oh, God, remarkably effective. <laughs> it is. If more people were to take that approach and really leveled with people on a human level, taken. Now, I will say this. I see a lot of people. We're selling confidence in an, in an inconfident world. And if you don't have enough confidence in your product to know without a shadow of a doubt that you are leaving these people exposed, if they're not doing business with you, we're not talking sales anymore. Yep. We're talking, I'm a human being and I need to help you because I know for matter of fact, without a doubt, if I don't help you, I'm allowing your family to be at risk. I'm allowing you to be at risk. I'm allowing your business to be at risk. Whatever it is, it's going to be at risk because I know for a fact that the product or the service that I provide is hands down the best in the market in the industry and no one's going to be able to service you yep. the way that I can. And if you don't have that belief system, if you're not able to get into the conversation and socially engineer the person that you're speaking with to understand that standpoint that you're coming from, there's no way you're going to ever be able to close the deal because you don't even believe in the value. Exactly. And from a, from a personal standpoint, I have a, a benefit of my, my oldest son is in military law enforcement. So he, he, he wears body armor every day. My right. youngest son, you know, we live in Las Vegas. You never know what's going to happen. We have a product that is, uh, gives a kid in school fighting chance. We have a backpack armor product that does the same thing. The bulletproof vests do. They just do it in a backpack. So I send my son to school every day now that the pandemic is done uh, with a backpack that has our product in it. I shipped my son in Virginia our product to replace the garbage that he was issued because I believe in it that much. I take it out in the desert and shoot at it. I'll buy competitors products and do the same thing because yeah. ultimately I take that responsibility incredibly into, just to heart. If we've talked through the day and I haven't been able to express the value in what I do and I do, I feel exactly that. I've left you exposed. I look at that as a personal failure um, and it keeps me up at night. I don't want anybody going out there getting hurt because I did my job poorly that day. So the, it's a terrible analogy and for what I do, but I've always believed never leave a bullet in the gun. If you got something, if you have something to say, say it. If there's, yeah. a, you know, if there's an objection out there, identify it, identify it and overcome it. And you're not going to, nobody bats a thousand, but you want to get as close to that as you possibly can. And I, I say the same thing. If if the only reason you buy from me is because you you can't, I can live with that. Uh, yeah. If you don't have the money, let's try to overcome it. Let's try to find a creative way to 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 get past that. But if if at the end of the day, I have what you want, I have what you need, and you would do it if it wasn't for your financial situation, I, I can I can accept it. It doesn't make me happy, but I can accept it. That at least you understand that you're making the concession here. Um, and understand that I'm going to call you back in a couple of weeks and keep hounding you. Every time you get a paycheck, I'm going to tell you to put 50 bucks in your account until we have the money to do it. Exactly. And you know what? That is the difference between a good salesperson and a great salesperson. So now I know you guys have a good sales team over there. We've rolled out sale ops for not only just yourselves, but a couple of you in that department. How have you seen the department as a whole change since, you know, sale ops has been involved? The, the dynamic internally has, aside from the obvious, right, you roll something like that out and everybody grabs their own mental piece of it that they can really relate to and gravitate, gravitate towards. Um, and they, they absolutely just they buy into this one little segment. It gets everybody excited, brings the energy level up. Once you get past that, the initial the first date, I'll call it once you're at, once you're past the first date and you really settle into the content and you start seeing the results of the content, you start seeing how your conversations Take a different path now. You become less transactional and more conversational. When you're not transactional, you're not threatening. 
I'm not selling you anything. I'm trying to figure out what you need, and I'm going to fill that need. It's that easy. Um, so watching my team members, my colleagues, it, and we all do various uh, market segments, have success in their individual market segments, which are totally removed from what I do. Mine is removed from theirs. We all do different things with, for different uh, walks of life. But the success, the, the success rate is comparable in every market segment. Every vertical <laughs> is experiencing a, a dramatic growth cycle here at a perfect time. Um, you know, we're company wide. We're, we're trying to be less um, dependent on impulse buy and right. more structured and be able to kind of tailor and, and know what to expect in terms of daily volume. Um, just basically mature as a company a little bit on the, the fulfillment side. And this enables us to do that. I know that with X number of conversations a day, I'm going to have a, a certain number of people who are going to, to, to order vests through me. My average order size is A plus B divided by C. So with reasonable effectiveness, we can predict volume, we can predict revenue, we can predict inventory levels, and watching how just this one change has not only created an entire new dynamic in the sales room, or which is growing into a sales center, um, but it's filtering <laughs> right. its way down. Because every other department now is looking at us going, well, what's going on over there? What, what are they doing over there? Why are they so excited? And how did the numbers double in 60 days? How did that happen? And that's the beauty of it. It is. And it works. It does. And what's really great is, you know, you get a lot of different sales training from a lot of different people. A lot of it is, you know, taken from here, taken from there. It's canned. Mm -hmm. What I really love about sale ops and, you know, it's stuff that you're not only going to use at work, but you're going to use it at home. You're going to use yep. it with your kids. You're going to use it at the grocery <laughs> store. You're going to use it at the mechanic shop. You're going to use it with your wife. And it's going to benefit you. It genuinely makes you a, a better person because understanding sales from a high psychological level, understanding elicitation, understanding, you know, intelligence gathering, understanding influence, understanding psychology and how to adapt to different people. It's like, look, you know, Mary down the street is you know, very interested in her business is about helping the poor in the community. Okay, guess what? Mary's not driven by the monetary value. Right. If she was, then she would be going after corporations, but she's going after the people who can't afford to pay her. If I'm trying, and now, of course, you know, Lux Bonnie, we do marketing, we do sales funnels, et cetera. If I'm trying to sell Mary uh, on why she should have a sales funnel bill about her outreach program, I can't talk to her about all the money she's going to make. That ain't who she is. Nope. Now, a lot of people, salespeople, they get it stuck and they want to just stick in one gear. They don't want to go to first, to second, to third. You got to downshift back to second, hit it first, and then they don't know how to maneuver that way. And one of the main reasons is because they can't hear when the engine needs to shift. You don't understand the RPM. Yep. So, a different people, personality types, understanding the cue points of what to listen to when the people are talking. Are they an auditory learner? Are they a visual learner? Are they a kinesthetic learner? I deal with a lot of, you know, large corporate CEOs. These people, they fly off the hinges. Why? Because they're kinesthetic people. They didn't get to where they're at because they want to rationally do shit. They flew off the hedge because they thought that was the right thing to do and they went balls to the wall. So mm -hmm. guess what? I have to tailor to that person. I can't say, well, if you do number one and number two and number three, no, I got to get into your heart. I got to pull your heartstrings. Brother, you can't do this. You can't do that. Well, why not? Because this ain't going this way. And you got to put around and do that. Mm -hmm. And guess what? At the end of the day, when you understand how to read people better, you're going to sell more. You're going to have better interactions in your life. You're going to have better interactions on the street. Has this impacted you personally at all? Oh my God. In, in every area of my life, I have, I have more fun out of the house now, just interacting with people, waitresses, waiters, hostesses, Perfect. people I go by. I mean, I'm looking to lease a car by the, a third vehicle by the end of the summer and I'm having more fun with car salesmen and their managers and probably should be allowed. Um, but I, I'll tell you, I do most of my modules at home in the evening hours. And my oldest son is, is, is in the military. He's across the country in Virginia. 
my youngest son is a learner. He's, he's a sponge. So he sits with me. We do the modules together, and he's, he's picked up so much of this. Well, he's also an elite-level baseball player. He's a pitcher, and he's being recruited. He's going into a senior year this year, and he's being recruited oh, by wow. several coaches. And he has grabbed on conceptually to elicitation and conversation command and control, and he's using it in the recruiting process. Having him talk wow. to coaches, I, I, I listen to the conversation because I'm, I'm a believer that when you're 17 years old, you're going to be 18. If you want to live like a man, you better act like one. So learn. Yeah. Uh, and I'm a trial by fire guy. Get in there. Fail. Learn by failing. Yeah. Go. So he, he's on the phone with this coach, and the coach is talking about the school. And I, act, I heard him say, well, coach, let me ask you something. What is it you feel like you need for your program? What do you think? What, 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 what could someone bring to the table for you that would be of major impact to the program and its success? And I heard that question and I almost fell out of my chair. And the coach responded, I actually got an email from the guy a couple of days later. And he says, I've never talked to, to someone who is with the maturity level of your son at this age. Um, where was that question from? And I said, honestly, it's from his heart. He, he understands that if, he, if, if you need somebody that throws 105, and we're back to numbers again. If you need somebody that throws 105 and he taps out at 92, if he tells you he's got 105 in the tank and he comes up short, who, who misled who there? So he'd rather be realistic and open with you and understand, do I have what you need? Can I contribute? Because if, if you need what I have and I can provide it to you at a high level, I, I, I walk on water as soon as I get on campus <laughs> uh, instead of coming out there starting out behind the eight ball. So it's watching him adapt these things into his daily life, watching how he interacts with his friends and how – when, when, the, when the friends are in small or large group settings, he's become the, the alpha dog because he's not afraid to talk. He's not afraid to get into conversation, and he's not afraid to ask or say things that make a lot of people uncomfortable. And the reason they're uncomfortable with it, call it you know, social conditioning or whatever, is that you know they're, they're just not prepared to have painful conversation because they're not used to overcoming objections. They run from objections and conflict. Yeah. I love conflict. I love objections. Tell me why I'm wrong. Because if I'm not, one of two things are going to happen. I'm either going to prove to you that I'm not, or I'm going to learn something today. What's the worst that can happen? I walk away. I walk away smarter. Okay, I'll take that. <laughs> <laughs> when 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 I listen to what your set, what your son did to the coach, I mean that is classic frame control. Mm -hmm. And people don't talk about that. Yep. They don't talk about that in sales. And then so like one of the first things we do. Uh, in Luxvani and when we're, you know, going on and getting on a call, most people, you know, luckily for us, we have a system that, you know, um, that pre-frames and then, you know, pre-loads the client before right. they ever get to us. So, you know, we understand these social engineering aspects. So we have an evergreen process that, you know, they hit the ad, they go inside of our funnel, they hit that evergreen process. By the time they're done with the process, they know what we do, how we do it, why we do it. They're sold on who we are. And yeah. then they go ahead, they're going to go and then fill out an application to do business with us because we're application based. We use the prize frame. And so they fill out that application for us. They give us all of their information. That allows us to start our intel gathering even before we ever get on the call with them. Yeah. And so now when my people show up, not only is that person already preloaded with all the information we need them to have, they psychologically are 80 percent sold. All my guys got to do is get on the phone, make it make rational sense and show them how it's going to happen. And what I love about the frame control is like as soon as we get on the call, people are expecting us to, you know, start pitching them and oh, this is what I could do. And this what it would. Oh, no, absolutely not. Boom. Hey, listen, you know, who are you? What do you do? How do you do it? What are you looking for? You know what I'm saying? How much money are you making? We start qualifying them off the bat. No, you're talking first. We script flip that script where inside of our scripting and get them talking first. We ain't starting the ones off the conversation. You're going to be talking. So what happens there? Completely flip the script on them. They don't know what to do. They're caught off guard. They didn't come in here trying to think they're going to have to pitch you. And now they start diarying from the mouth. Yeah. And guess what they're giving you? all of the information that you need to know if you can help them. And yeah. what your son did was, hey, hold on a minute. Why don't you tell me what you do? What are the problems in your business? How are you looking to get there? And on a scale of one to 10, how 
committed are you to get in there? Now let me see if I actually have an alignment with you. Yep. So. I mean, I'm, I'm sure you've experienced it as, as much as I have. So many people in this business, in the, in the sales game, guys who are seasoned, true professional salesmen cannot click a pen or make a statement that emulates clicking a pen and then shut up. So find, finding the ability, like you said, when you flip the script and say, Mr. And Mrs. Whoever you are, tell me, what is it you need? Who are you? What are you about? What is it you're missing in your world that you feel like I can magically fulfill? And tell me about that in as much detail as we can gather. And let's see if we're a fit. If we're fit, they've already told you they're, you're a fit. By the time you get to the point, once they're done pitching you, they've already created the affirmation in their own mind. Well, yeah, this is what I need. This is why I'm calling. Well, cool. That's what we do. One of the, one of the greatest things when, when I, so I get some inbound calls where, where it's guys who are saying, listen, I, I don't know what I'm doing here, but I know I need to buy vests. And my first statement is, cool, I do that. How many? And that right. it just takes them into the, like, wait, what? And there, what? No more to it than that? Well, of course there's more to it than that. But how many? Let's start there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, hundred so, percent. And how committed are you to that number? <laughs> <right>. <laughs> so, so when I look at Lux Vani and I look at, uh, at at sale ops in particular, I've been around sales professionals, and I've I owe I owe so much to the the sales professionals who who took me in early on in my career, and you know really helped guide me and te and teach me the the fundamentals and the basics, and had patience sharing the lead pool with the new guy. Um, and as, as through the years, I've, I've tried to reciprocate that as best I can um, in the guys who are coming up in the game now. One of the things that I see of the most value from Luxvani and from, and from uh, the sales ops perspective is the ability to impact the lives of sales professionals the way it's impacted mine. Um, you know how it is. You get to any point in, any, in your life, you can find a way to complacency or yeah. you can recognize complacency and find a way out. And for guys who've been in the game a long time, who are used to the, the shiny shoe pitching, whatever, however you want to phrase it, for guys who can take that, what they know, and wrap it, put it in a box and put it on a shelf, learn something new and apply it to their day, it, this, this program is invaluable. It's, it could be the cost, doesn't matter what the number is. If you can't commit yourself to this, to improve your life as a sales professional and improve your life as a human being, be able to go out and interact with human, other human beings, then what are you doing? What are you doing with yourself? You really should be able to walk out of the house and find a way throughout your day for yourself and the people you come across day, day to day to go home as good or better than you left the house. And if we oh, all man. took that approach, the world would be a better place. And if it just starts in sales, I'm okay with that. And I'm okay with that. Uh, <laughs> One thousand percent. You know, it's funny. Um, you know, of course, Brady, I, I don't know a whole lot about you. This is our first time getting together here, talking, figuring this thing out. So you guys are watching us interact live. So, you know, when you said you come come from a, you know, construction background, I started laughing in my head because that's the background I come from. So I'm used to uh, I did chimneys and roofing for 10 years. Um, family business. I was able to learn the ropes, got dirty, face full of soot, cleaning chimneys 30 feet up. I know what it's like to work in 20 degree weather and your hands are getting numb. Now, I didn't have a choice. Of course, I wanted to go right in the office and go work. That wasn't happening. So I did the work to learn how to sell it. I figured a way out around doing the work. So, well, if every time that I get to a job, I get these flyers. Now I'm like, you know, 13 years old. I get these flyers. I don't got to work if I go around into the whole neighborhood and give out all these flyers. Cloverleaf so is so good. <laughs> <laughs> First thing, right? Get a little confidence. Okay, I'm a give me these flyers. I start going down, hitting the hitting the corners, hitting the streets while they're on the job. An hour, two hours, boom. They come, call, where the hell you at? I'm freaking 16 streets over, hitting all the areas, right? I'm knocking on doors. I'm seeing people, you know, after doing that enough, you know, coming into some chance counters of conversation, getting over that fear. 
right? Now I'm out there. I'm looking for people. I'm not, hey, we're down the street. I just uh, noticed your chimney cap. You got a couple shingles missing. We're right here. I sort of just want to see if, you know, maybe you can use the help, something like that. And, uh, you know, one thing leads to another. Um, so really being out there in the street, going door to door, uh, helped me get over that fear and, and start, you know, developing that entrepreneurial spark, that sales spark, you know, at a young age. And uh, kind of and just to give you a little backstory on me, because I said it would, um, you know, kind of uh, took that, was able to sell a, a ton of contracting work. And then I found my way inside the office. Now, I've got this, you know, I've been having fun for a couple of years at this point. I start going B2B start going to different companies. I ain't gonna give none of you chimney guys any ideas, but start going to different companies and this and that and the third. I start getting our company in there. They start referring us. What ends up happening? I find myself managing anywhere between eight to fifteen million dollars in business here. I start to get into marketing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Also got into a little bit of real estate investing. You know, my family also does a lot of uh, real estate uh, building and et cetera. Obviously it goes hand in hand with the contracting. I start getting my feet wet in, in the whole real estate world. Got my license, had a good time, started selling real estate, started making different connections there. And now I'm doing both. I'm real estate, I got realtors calling me, oh, I need this chair, oh, I need an inspection. Boom, and I'm doing all this different stuff. and. I say, I'm running like a nut right now. This is crazy. So I started to get involved with the marketing, met Dakota, Big TV. I'm going to these different personal development events and whatever. He's the freaking head internet marketer for one of the top guys speaking with Les Brown and all this stuff. And I end up meeting him on the bathroom line, but not through mutual friends. So we're watching, you know, these guys talk, whatever, and you know, whatever. We started talking. It's cool, man. We like we hit it off right then and there. And so, uh, and so we exchange each other's, you know, information. We follow each other on social and all that. And so, I see a need in the marketplace. All these realtors, they don't know what the hell they're doing. They don't know how to put themselves out there on social. They don't know how to build their businesses. They're like struggling. So what do I do? I use the back room in the damn office. And I started a class and I'm teaching now, you know, in the meantime, started a record label. I'm DJing these different, you know, events and whatnot. Um, I'm having, I'm having my personal, I'm 20 something years old. I'm having a damn ball. I'm making money. I'm freaking, you know, throwing parties and et cetera. So what do I do? I know how to use social media. I know how to get in front of these people. I know how to influence. I got to get part people out to my parties and all the stuff. So I'm like, realtors got to do the same damn thing. I put together a course for apps that people can create content on the go and leverage their social media platforms and how to create professional content, a whole media company in your pocket. Nice. And a course to do it. So I start inviting out all the realtors and I'm teaching the class. Now I'm teaching class. I'm not charging nothing for the class though. I'm just selling the course to the realtor, whoever wants it. So I called DB and I'm like, yo, man, I got this course, bro. He's like, look, tell me about it. And I started telling him about it. And he's got a sales team, about 30 guys at that point. Now, he's like, you know what, man? Yo, my guys need this shit, bro. I'm like, well, let's set up a call. Let me, let me get in there and let me see what I can do. So I get in there. With the course, the guys double their sales in like three weeks. He's like, yo, Ed, you obviously know what you're doing, bro. Blah, blah, blah. Check this out. I come in. I take what he's doing. I, I slide it in a couple doors I know. I don't know. We make money hand over fist like three weeks in a row. He's like, dude, how the hell did you do that? I'm like, what do you mean? I didn't even do nothing. We do what? He's like, bro, I've been trying to get these guys to do that for freaking hell and hell. He's like, bro, he's like, we got to figure something out. <laughs> now, long story short, that's my brother. I ride with him to the end. I ain't going nowhere. That's my partner in crime. I love that guy. 
I'll, I'll fucking, we'll die in battle together. <laughs> now, fast forward two, three years. Of course, we built the business. We're doing, you know, damn near close to a half a million dollars a month in revenue. I take care of all the sales people. I run that end. He go do whatever the hell you want to do, bro. Leave me, leave chief revenue officer, bro, for a reason. Right. Let me worry about the money. Let me take care of the guys. Let me meet these guys. This is my ship. Go, go sit back, relax, go do something else. So he starts working on sale ops. We start putting all our brains together. We're dumping all of this information into this course. Of course, you know, we got big, big celebrity endorsements with this thing. And, you know, the sky's been the limit since I got together with him. But what I learned from Dakota and what I learned from what he's been able to instill in me has been something I can never repay him for. Right. And that's why I repay him with my loyalty. Because making people better people is not something you're going to get just from any sales course. You got it. Making people understand from a psychological level how to love individuals, how to take sales out of sales and actually be a human in sales. I don't care what industry you're in. I don't care what you're selling. Nobody wants to be sold to. Yeah. Everybody wants to be heard. They want to feel love. They want to feel compassion. They want to feel included. And if you can do that for someone by understanding on a high level of how to communicate, you're going to solve your marital problems. You're going to solve problems with your kids. You're going to yep. solve problems in the workplace. You could be the lowest person on the damn totem pole in your sales room, and you could be the only person to be going through this damn thing. And guess <laughs> what? You're going to influence your boss. You're going to influence the people around you. You're going to be able to make your team better just because you're a better communicator. You're a better person Indeed. in a whole. So, I mean, I've, I've been scrubbing the floors and I've been in the rooms closing the deals with the top level CEOs that I could find. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you what, this sale ops, the art of human hacking has been hands down the bridge for me personally, and has been able to bridge the gap that by knowing these different things, yeah, a yeah. licitation, the different elements of social engineering, understanding how to, you know, gather information, how to, you know, influence people at a high level. It's bar none. So Indeed. has it changed my life completely? It will continue to change my life. I know that I am no longer the same person. And Brady, from what you're saying, bro, it's like, if you ain't involved with this thing, you're missing out. If your business doesn't have it, you're missing out. So, you know, tell me a little bit about, you know, one or what would be one piece of advice for a salesperson who doesn't know shit, they're wet behind the ears. What would be one or two pieces of advice that you would give that person? They kind of tie together. Um, one would be never, ever stop learning about this craft. It evolves daily as the social uh, landscape changes. So does the sales environment. Never stop learning. And the only way you can do you can commit to, to to never stopping the learning process is to never stop training. If you I, I, I equate a lot of things back to baseball because I believe life lessons are learned on that field uh, better than just about anywhere else in terms of overcoming failure and whatnot. If uh, you, know, you if you close at a 30 percent rate on a baseball field at the highest level, you fail seven out of 10 times, you're in the Hall of Fame. So yeah. being able to learn from that failure and come back from it is, is paramount, but never stop learning and never stop training. Training isn't something you've done, it's something you do. It's an everyday commitment to yourself. You don't go into a prize fight coming off a six month layoff, you train. It's something you do, it's not something you've done. So as a young person coming in, as soon as you think you've got this game figured out, it's going to jump around on you. <laughs> never stop learning. Never stop training. Close yourself. Close your family. Close everybody you talk to. Learn, communicate, do all the things that make you effective at what you do over and over and over. Rep it. 
until it becomes second nature and then rep it some more. <laughs> You're absolutely right. And you hit it on the head, everything that you said. And, you know, we have a uh, saying here, people want what they can't have. They chase that which removes away from them and they only value what they pay for. And if you can understand those three concepts, you can really change the dynamic and the perspective of your world. Because no matter what, the landscape's always going to change. The dynamic's always going to change. But what's not going to change is the psychology behind the reason why humans do what they do. There's always a rhyme and a reason. And if you could figure out what that rhyme is, you could always figure out the reason that's it and, and that's you, you really hit on a really valuable word track right there and i i am gonna i have a um i gotta cut out and go actually yeah let's a fairly large casino um, <laughs> which is a happy part of my day um but you, you hit a really good point on the head right there and knowing the why when you're, you're doing all this you're trying to figure out what your your customer's why is and what your the people you're communicating with what their why is a big part of that as, as a young guy talking back to the to the to the up and comers again understand what your why is what drives you what made you want to be in sales if it's all about money and it's i mean that's let's face it that's a it's it's a big part of it for a lot of us but sure. you know do are you do you care about a number in a bank account or you care about providing for yourself and your family those are two different things what's your why when you understand at a very deep level what your why is you're almost qualified to understand what everybody else's is and you can speak to it so it's that would be a big piece of advice for the young folks too is start there Learn your why and, and grow from there. And you grow by doing over and over and over. <laughs> You've got that right. One million percent. Brady, I appreciate you coming on here, brother. It is an absolute pleasure to meet you. I, we're, we will have tons more conversations. Yes, and we will. I know for a fact, brother, ain't no stopping us, baby, because we got you the know. pieces for the puzzle. Indeed. You make it out to Vegas, you come look me up. We'll go do steaks and whiskey. And I come to Virginia probably once a year. I think I'm back on Virginia Beach in um, November, I believe. Um, when you come out, you find me. I'm going to be out by you probably before you can be out by me, and I will see you. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right, my brother. Enjoy right, the rest of the day. Have some fun. Be great. You too. Be great, brother. See ya.